Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series, where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea or an abstract theme in the fields of electronics or electrical engineering and make it more tangible and easy to understand. This video will take a look at one of the most basic yet most fundamental concepts in analyzing and building circuits and they are the different types of circuit connections, such as parallel and series connections, with the help of resistors. But before diving into these concepts, let's clarify the tools that we will be using today in the workbench. In this tutorial, we have three main equipments, and they are multimeters, breadboards, and any number of resistors you have lying around. The resistor values I am using in this video are a resistor value of 10 kilo ohms, a resistor of 47 kilo ohms, and a resistor value of 22 kilo ohms. Just as we did in our last video, we will be using the multimeter as an ohm meter that measures resistance. As for breadboards, I've extensively covered this topic in the first video of the series. You can refer to it if you need a refresher. I also encourage you to review what nodes are and loops are, and if, you, if you'd like to do so, you can also view the first video of this playlist. If you remember anything from middle to high school physics, you remember that you studied the conservation of energy. Kirchhoff's circuit laws, which lie at the heart of circuit analysis, are special cases of the laws of conservation of charge and conservation of energy with electrical circuits. The laws are as follows. Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's current law is one of the fundamental laws used for circuit analysis, and it's an application of the conservation of charge to a node. His current law states that for a parallel path, the total of currents entering a circuit's node is exactly equal to the current leaving the same node. This is because current has no other place to go, therefore no charge is lost. As for Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is the second law of his fundamental laws and is an application of the conservation of energy, it states that for a closed loop series path, the algebraic sum of all voltages around a closed loop in a circuit is equal to zero. This is because a circuit loop is a closed conducting path, so no energy is lost. To apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, we will be observing a loop and taking the algebraic sum of all the voltages around that loop, correct? So let's take this loop for example, and I will be taking the direction of the loop starting from the negative terminal of the power supply. And as I go through each branch of the loop, I will be writing the voltage equation for KVL. So starting with the negative terminal of the voltage power supply, we write down minus V1, which is minus 12 volts. And then, and, and as I go through the loop, I reach the voltage of the first resistor, so I will write that down as a positive uh, voltage. And then when I reach the second resistor, I write the voltage for that second resistor down as a positive voltage and that total summation of all these voltages should equal to zero. And when I rearrange the equation, I get this equation with the voltage of the power supply equating to the voltage of both resistors. And when I use Ohm's law, I get this equation where the voltage of the power supply is equal to the currents multiplied into the each resistor in this loop of resistors. Components in a circuit can be connected in many ways. There are two fundamental ways to connect more than two circuit components, and they are series and parallel. These two basic connection methods can then be combined to create more complex circuits that utilize both series and parallel connections. So let's start with series connectivity. 
Series circuits are circuits where the electrical components or the electronic components are connected end-to-end -end in such a manner that creates a single path for the current to flow through. Therefore, resistors in series share the same current. When looking at a series circuit, we can see two resistors in series with a voltage source. Now this is a simple circuit, but as things get more complex, we would need to simplify the circuit into an equivalent voltage and resistance. To calculate the equivalent resistance for a series circuit, we need to apply Kirchhoff voltage law, which is based on the conservation of energy. But why Kirchhoff voltage law? In a series circuit, current flows through all the electrical components. The same current is flowing through all the electrical or electronic components. However, voltage is being divided. Therefore, since voltage is the, is the quantity being divided, we will be using the Kirchhoff voltage law to analyze the circuit and find a way where we can calculate series resistance. So when we take the Kirchhoff voltage law and apply it to the circuit, we get this equation minus V1, which is the voltage supply, since we are taking it into the direction of the negative, power so negative terminal of the power source or power supply, then we're going through the resistor of 1K, and this is another voltage, and the second voltage on the resistor, on the second resistor of 1K. And then through rearranging these Rearranging the equation, we get the following. The voltage of the voltage source is being applied to two electrical components or electronic components, which are the two resistors. Therefore, when we break it down even further through the use of Ohm's law, we can see that through factoring out the I, which is a common factor in this equation, we can see that we're left with the two resistances where we can add them up. Therefore, we can calculate the resistance of a series circuit through adding up all the resistances that are in series with each other. In this simple circuit, we will be adding up the two, two resistances, which is R1, which is 1K, and R2, which is another 1K. So the total series resistance for this circuit is 2 kilo ohms. Therefore, to calculate series resistance, we can follow the general rule below. In the workbench, we have three resistors connected in series, as shown in the circuit diagram below. Let's see what happens when we connect these resistors in series and try to measure the series resistance. From what we've learned in this video, we can calculate in advance the series resistance by just adding up the resistors in series. So we have a 47 kilo ohm resistor in series with a 22 kilo ohm, as well as a 10 kilo ohms resistor. And what we expect is that we get about 80,000 kilo ohms on the multimeter display. It's important to note that when measuring resistance, we, we should remove the power supply plug from the circuit board. So how do we measure the res resistance of a series circuit? As displayed from the circuit diagram, we have identified the different nodes that are in this series circuit. We can see that uh, the 47k ohm is connected to the 20k ohm through a node, which we've denoted as node B in orange. And 20k ohm's resistor is connected to the resistor value of 10k ohm through a green line or node, which we've denoted as node C. As we would like to measure the series resistance of these three resistances combined, we would need to connect the multimeter, the positive ends of the multimeter, in at node A, starting with the 47 kilo ohms. And the, the black wire, or the negative terminal of the multimeter, to node D. And note that there are no polarity requirements for attaching the meter leads. And the example that I gave of connecting the positive lead to node A and the negative lead to node B can be switched without affecting the result of the multimeter's measurements of the resistance.
So how do I know that these resistors are in series? I start with this resistor, it's connected to one node, and then the other end of this no uh, the resistor is connected to another node that is shared by one end of the other resistor. Similarly, the other resistor, the final resistor in, these, in this series circuit, is connected to the same node, when the other ends of this resistor's terminals is connected to the same node that is shared with this resistor. So as we've mentioned, we will connect each ends of the leads of the multimeter to node A, which is where the 47 kilo ohms is connected to, and ending with the second lead connected to the node D, ends of the where the other 10 kilo ohms resistor is connected to. And we get a total of 78.6 kilo ohms, as we've calculated, which is about roughly 79 kilo ohms. And if we measure them individually, starting with the 47 kilo ohms and adding up the 22 kilo ohms, we get about 68.6 .6 or 68.7 kilo ohms. And when we add the 10 kilo ohms, we get about 78.6 kilo ohms. What about parallel connectivity? Components are considered to be connected in parallel when they share two nodes. Since the components are connected in parallel and they share two nodes, the voltage applied to these two nodes will be shared across all the components in the circuit and the current will be split. Now, since the current is the variable that's being split, in this case, we will be applying the Kirchhoff current law to one node, which is this node, the node where the current actually splits. We can see that the current entering this node is equal to the two currents exiting the nodes and flowing through the two resistors, IR1 and IR2. Now, if we apply Ohm's law, IR1 is broken down into VR1 over R1 and VR2 over R2. And since we're applying the same voltage on, the sa on these two same nodes, then we can take the voltage as a common factor and we're left with 1 over R1 plus R1 over R2 as the equivalent resistor for the parallel resistance. Therefore, the general rule of thumb for calculating parallel resistors is this equation. As we've done in the series part of this video, in the workbench we have three resistors that are connected in parallel as shown in the circuit diagram below. Let's see what happens when we connect these resistors in parallel and try to measure the parallel equivalent resistance. From what we've learned in this video, we can calculate the parallel resistance as shown in this equation where we get a total of 5.997 kilo ohms, which is approximately 6 kilo ohms. And how can we measure the parallel resistance? After removing the circuit power supply and turning it off, we need to place the leads of the multimeter as displayed in the circuit diagram. As we would like to measure the resistance in parallel, we would need to connect the positive uh, lead of the the positive terminal of the multimeter to node A and the negative terminal of the multimeter to node B. Now, let's measure the resistance for the three resistors in parallel. The With the setting is... of the multimeter being at 200 kilo ohms, we get about 6 kilo ohms for the parallel resistors. And when we dial down the setting to about 20 kilo ohms, we get a more accurate reading of 5.99 5.93 kilo ohms. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. In our next video, we will be exploring how we can use mult multimeters to measure both voltage and current. So stay tuned for that video.